Does anybody have any questions about that chair sit that we used for our warm up? We're going to revisit that chair sit in our technique tonight. However, we're going to have a slightly different context before it. So last class, we were talking about how to get to our opponent's back when they create back exposure. You may recall, we've also talked about last time we did our back control module, how to force back exposure by utilizing that near side underhook, right? So like if I was in the side control position, we were able to gain that near side underhook, and I was able to use that to start to create that same sort of back exposure. We have sort of different, two different thought processes when it comes to attacks in jiu-jitsu. We can either be proactive or reactive. Proactive meaning I am actually going forth and doing my aggressive technique, my aggressive movement, or reactive meaning I'm reacting and timing and noticing what they do so that I can fit in and continue to attack. Now tonight we're going to be talking about a reactive back take, and that is when our opponent starts to turn into us. Their goal when they're turning into us is to start to reestablish guard, start to escape from the bottom of the side control, or start to just get up and get away from us so that way we're not pinning them anymore. Now when I'm in the side control position, oftentimes our opponent's going to look to get an underhook. Okay? So if I'm here in the side control, he's going to look to get an underhook on my body. So now he can start to use this underhook to either get up on his knees, look to threaten my back, go for single legs and knee taps, or just simply reset his guard. When my opponent turns in towards me, they're exposing their back. They're just exposing it at a different angle. They're exposing it on the other side of their body. We're going to use this as an opportunity to do what we call a top spin. And the top spin is where we're going to move ourselves from this position to their back while keeping them in this turned position. So let's remind ourselves of our back control concept really quickly. Our primary concept for back control is that we're going to look to create a chest to spine connection, my chest to his spine, and then some form of upper body control. Let's look at how we can utilize our top spin to prevent our opponent from getting back away from us and then allowing us to take their back here. Okay? So let's say I'm here, he starts to turn in, he starts to get the underhook on my body. Boom. Okay? So once he has this underhook on my body, I'm going to start to use the top spin to get behind him because I understand what his goal is. His goal is to start to turn into me. Okay? So let's take a look. Here we go. So I'm again using our same chair sit. I'm just starting at a different position. So let's look at this top spin. The top spin is actually a pretty simple movement. I'm going to I'm going to uh, sort of pantomime it my, um, just one time so you guys can see what it looks like without a partner, okay? So here's the top spin. Ready? That's the top spin. So I'm just basically doing like a spin move on my knees. That's all it is. So let's look at how we're going to start this. So first our opponent's going to be pummeling for their underhook. Now a lot of times in jiu-jitsu when our opponent pummels for an underhook, we need to recognize the goal of this underhook. The goal of the underhook is to start to generate movement so that they can create this inside position and start to expose my back, get behind me, or just simply prevent me from getting behind him. Underhooks prevent back takes, and they also provide back takes. So some people may be thinking, well, like, if they underhook, I can use my windshield wiper. But the problem is, he has an underhook. If I windshield wiper, I can't suddenly disintegrate his arm and then move through it. Right? He's blocking me here. So here's what we're going to do. When he gets the underhook, I want to deny him the ability to use that underhook. So to do this, I'm going to place my hand in his lower back, and I'm going to clamp my elbow right against his hip here. Okay? It's not wrong, if we turn a little bit here, it's not wrong to try to re-pummel to get your underhook back, on, back in here. This is not wrong. Okay? The only thing that you need to think about is when I create the space to re-pummel, he can often follow me and start to generate a lot of movement. So for those of you who, you know, you may want to be like smash him down and be really, really heavy, it's totally fine to try to re-pummel for your own underhook. But just understand that if he's got a really sticky underhook, I might give him the space he needs to start to come up and attack me. So the way that we're going to slow them down and sort of prevent them from using this underhook is by just connecting our elbow to their hip. Not so dissimilar to the way that we box the hips in after we finish passing. So I'm using my left elbow here to box his hip in, and I'm in kind of like a knee cut style position, OK? So we would generally call this side side control. My hips are kind of plopped right against his hips, and I'm controlling his hips. So from here, I'm going to keep a frame on his shoulder, OK? I can use this to help keep him pinned down. But here, I'm using regulated tension to follow when he starts to turn up into me. Regulated tension is a concept we talk about a lot. It's basically the Goldilocks zone. I'm not going to just spam and do something as hard as I possibly can. 
but I'm also not just cosmetically placing my limbs in positions. I'm kind of using my arms and legs like feelers or antenna. So I'm going to be he keeping my hand here frame the shoulder. Now, when he turns in towards me, this frame is going to go right into front of his, his neck here. My other hand that was behind his back is going to hook right in front of his hip. This is going to help prevent his guard from following me. Now, notice I'm still in that sort of knee cut style position. One knee down, one knee out. Now, from here, I'm going to start, take a big step over his head. This is not so dissimilar to the spinning arm bar that we did the other week, if you guys remember that one. So I'm going to take my right leg, and I'm going to start to step it over his head. When I do, I'm using my right leg as a frame to prevent him from getting his back flat on the mat. So again, I'm here. My elbows are framing against his body. I step over, and my knee starts to block and brace his shoulder. Whatever leg is stepped over his head, that same arm is now going to reach in front of his body. I'm just framing my hand on the mat for right now. As soon as I get this hand on the mat, now if I wanted to, I could try to solidify and go back to side control on the other side. However, we want to take their back. So look, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch my knees. Whereas this knee is down, this knee's up. As soon as my hand goes down, I'm going to switch. Now I'm going to take my big toe and trace a circle above his head. And now look, I'm in the identical position I was in, but on the other side. As soon as I make that circle, I'm going to hold his collar, and I'm going to grab the back of his collar. This is going to prevent him from flattening his chest back out. Now, once I have this connection on him, I'm going to use my chest to start to roll him back out so I can get up on my knees and for my chair sit. So let's go through one more time slowly. We're going to look at our big key details, and then we're going to look at it from a different angle. Okay? We'll do it from this side. So again, my opponent starts to get their underhook on me. Boom, I immediately clamp down. Okay? So look how I'm keeping my hips connected to his. I'm using my elbow, chicken wing, right? Elbow clamped against his body, and I'm framing the shoulder. Regulated tension. When he starts to build up into me, I get my forearms in place. So look how my elbows are drooping in front of his body. This is providing frames to sort of protect my body and to maintain distance between the two of us. Now that I'm here, I have one knee down, one leg up. I'm going to take a big step over the head and wedge my knee. Notice how I'm not coming up tall. When we're creating a lot of space like this, it opens up opportunities for our opponent to flatten back out. So I want to make sure that when I step over the head, I'm staying low, wedging strong with my leg. Whatever foot just stepped over, same hand, reaches in front of their hip. I don't want to take this arm with me, so I'm going to let it go as I step around. Now look, I can grab onto his collars, push him away, build up onto my knees, drop your mic, and then you're ready to take the back with the chair sit. So let's see this again, slow motion. I'm going to do it from a slightly different angle. Let's turn this way. So again, I want you guys Recognize how to control their underhook first, okay? So when he turns in towards me, I want you to get here, okay? I want you to block him. We're going to keep his shoulder pinned, use our elbow to keep his hip and his elbow under our control. So he starts to turn in towards me. In front, look, I'm loose. I'm light, okay? Again, we're regulated tension. I'm not just trying to brute force everything I do. From here, I'm going to take my step over his head, wedge, I reach, Circle, and I immediately start driving back in. Okay, look how I'm controlling his collars here. This is going to help prevent him from going to his back. Now that I'm in this position, I push, build up to my knees, and I fit in for my chair sit. I'll show one more time slowly without talking, and then if we have any questions, we'll go through it. Alrighty, guys, this is our top spin. Does anybody have any questions? Chris? The, the leg that I'm trying to step over the head with? Not too likely, okay? Here's why. So when I'm initiating the top spin, when we get, he has the underhook here. When I get into this position, look how I'm pulling that leg away from him, okay? As I start to step over this head, when that knee touches down, my leg is gone, okay? I'm going to immediately start to circle that foot behind him. 
If he does grab onto my leg here, my leg versus his arm, I'm going to overpower. It's too far away. This one? Yeah, this one. This is the step, this is the yeah. spin. He can't, this is too far away. That's why my frames are here. I'm controlling the space. The step is way too far. Yeah, so look. The only so one I can grab is the spin here. Coach can try to reach and grab this leg. It's just too far. By that time I go over, I'm going to overpower here. Boom. I'm immediately driving back in. Okay. Any other questions? Gavin? Yeah, anytime I'm stepping over their head, I can go armbar, Kimura. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a frog in my throat. Armbar, Kimura, whatever I want to do. I can pit stop in north-south, because I know you like north-south. But uh, let's expose the back and take the back. Okay. Any questions? Take your time. Go slow with this one, OK? Let's go one, two. We're going to continue working this top spin throughout the class tonight. And we're going to do a little speed drill at the end that's really going to help uh, uh, solidify your muscle memory for this one. So just a couple things, guys. It's looking good. Remember, we're, we're dealing based in the context of side control, OK? So my opponent gets his underhook. I use my hip-to-hip -hip connection. And I'm blocking opposite corners here. Remember, I'm, if I'm always just one note, the second he gets the underhook, I just immediately start trying to go. Then I start to open up sort of like patterns. And when my opponent starts to read those patterns, I become too easy, right? Too easy to start to see what I'm doing. So look, I'm here. I'm riding the position. When he continues to turn in towards me to get up, there are my frames. Look how immediately I go one knee up, one knee down, OK? This knee and elbow might look like familiar. It's a knee elbow connection. Right, I have my knee elbow connection here to block his knees from coming in and regarding. My other foot is out, and look how I'm low. Now from here, when I step over this left arm, it's going to be in the way of my leg if I don't move it. So look how I step over and I move it. I start to reach it in front. My other arm comes up. See how both my knees, they switch jobs. Now I'm essentially right where we were, but on the other side. Okay. Now look, I go big toe, swing. And now look, I'm in the side side control, but on the other side of his body. Okay, I get something, I find some sort of connection that I can use to keep him turned away from me. And now from here, I'm gonna start to drive my way into him to keep him rolled as I get in for my seatbelt. Okay, guys, so I want you to just do one more round of drilling this uh, top spin. But again, some of the key details that I want us to work through. We're going hip to hip first. As he builds up into me, I get my frames. Okay, using these frames, this helps me maintain space and distance between the two of us. As the top leg comes over, the top arm comes off, I reach in front, and look how immediately I'm hip to hip. Okay? I know you might want to sit down on your knees immediately to start to take, do the uh, chair sit, but take a minute to focus on hip control. 99% of jujitsu is hip control, right? Pretty much everything you try to do in jiu-jitsu, you have to control their hips in some way because the hips are the engine of the body. The hips generate all movement. So once I'm here, I have hip control. Now I drive in, fit in for my chair sit, and I'm ready to continue. OK, guys, does anyone have any questions on this one? Let's go slow. OK, we'll increase our sort of confidence with this. Try both sides because um, we'll do a little speed drill where we'll do both sides here at the end of class. All right, any questions? One more round. Let's go one, two. Okay, so we're just going to do one more little thing tonight. Um, we're just going to do a slight variation of the collar chokes that we were working on last class. Last class, we were talking about our basic cross collar choke from the back, which is kind of like our gi equivalent of a rear naked choke. It's very simple, uh, very high percentage. Now let's just talk about the bow and arrow choke. The bow and arrow choke is just a slight variation. All we're doing is just one hand different. That's, that's all it's going to be. Okay. So I'll demonstrate the bow and arrow choke. We'll just start on. Uh, upright in this position, and then I'll, I'll demonstrate it again from the side position here, okay, guys? So I'm going to demonstrate slowly, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Here we go. So this is our bone arrow choke. This is called the bone arrow choke because I'm grabbing two separate points of his body, and I'm pulling them back like I'm drawing a bow. All right, guys, so from here, I'm in my back mount position. I'm uh, in the orientation of the position that, uh, of the side that you guys were on, so I have my left arm over here. I'm protecting the kill hand. Remember, the top arm is the hand I'm going to strangle him with. So that's the hand I imagine I take a knife, I stab him in the heart, and then I protect the kill hand. Just like we did last class, I peel his gi open, slide my thumb in, and now I want to grab the other collar, but he's going to be blocking. He's defending. He knows that if I can get this other collar grip, he's done. So look, instead of futzing around trying to grab that other collar, I'm actually going to pull that arm out, and I'm going to reach down and grab his pants. Now I'm grabbing uh, right at the knee. If I grab too high, 
couple issues with that. Number one, that's not the end of the lever, okay? That's like trying to open a door at the hinges versus the handle. I'm not gonna have very much uh, effect coming out of that. So also number two, the higher up you grab, the tighter their pants are. You're just gonna be able to grab less stuff. So look, I go right at the knee. Now from here, we talked about our two main adjustments with collar chokes last class, my height of the choking hand and the angle of my body. When we do this bow and arrow choke, we're again creating a happy medium between the two. I'm creating a nice angle with my body. As I fall to my side, I again step my feet up on his hips. From here, I'm gonna start to use my legs to press him away as we did before. As I do this though, I'm gonna pull this leg, the one that I'm holding, up towards me. So again, I'm pulling this grip and creating an isometric hold. So I pull up and back, and now I'm gonna use my legs to press him away as I pull that leg towards me. The most sort of effective variation of this choke will actually see us creating an arm trap on the top side. So for those of you who were with us last class, maybe we utilize that arm trap we looked at. And then crossing our ankles to create a very strong leg press configuration. Now I'm using my legs to press him down into the choke as I again create that noose and closed loop around his neck. Using this pant grip, I'm gonna to start to pull him. So this is opposite corner rotational control. I'm pulling his leg this way as I rotate his upper body that way. This is a very powerful choke. In fact, it's arguable this, this could be the strongest possible choke you can do to someone in jiu-jitsu, so please be slow and controlled with this. So look, I'm pulling this leg up, and I'm creating that isometric hold with my grip as I press him and hang him from a noose. All righty, guys. So let's say I'm here and I'm already on my side, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing, I feed, I reach down. If the pant leg's hard to get, okay, look, use your hooks to help to pull it and lift him up a little bit to make it easier to grab that pant. Now that I have a good grip, I again start to step. If I can trap the top arm, best case scenario. Isometric hold, pull the knee towards you, press your legs away. Okay, guys? I'll demonstrate once more slow motion from here. Okay, guys, so when you do this one, please go slow. All right, I don't want you to uh, pop your partner's head off and see it rolling down the mat. All righty, guys, I'll leave it up to you. Um, you can either just start from the back control, or if you'd like to, you can do the whole thing, starting with that top spin. Let's go. One, two.